Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. It's Thursday morning. No, it's not Thursday morning. It's Thursday afternoon. What am I saying? I just changed the afternoon. Just <laughs> an hour ago. <laughs> but uh, uh, we had a great stream on Monday where I demonstrated the new Wacom Cintiq 16. And um, today you can see I got the green screen back up behind me. And uh, I went and did uh, this little image, this image that you see between uh, behind me right now, the, these two little cubs. Um, I felt like doing something really cute. And I've been wanting to put mishmash different animals that wouldn't normally meet in nature and kind of mish them, mish, I can't talk, mash them together and just come up with some fun, uh, cute uh, imagery. And uh, so there's one I'm doing today. I wanted, uh, I wanted to do one kind of based on stripes. So I have this tiger and a zebra uh, idea that I wanted to play out and, uh, and just have them come up with a composition uh, leading up to uh, today's uh, live stream. I was doing some little sketch and, uh, sketches, some scribbles, trying to come up with a very quick composition, something I think is going to work okay. Um, I've got to get a few things in here to get to work a little bit better. But anyway, um, that's kind of what I wanted to do today is just continue with this little thematic of these young animals meeting up and just having some fun with those, getting a little Disney-fied. 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 Yes. <laughs> and so, um, anyway, but I hope you guys enjoyed the thing on Tuesday uh, with the Wacom Cintiq. It was really popular. We had a lot of people really interested, and I think we um, we converted a few people, which is kind of cool. Uh, but as usual, I've got my trusty, dusty son, Dustin. Hey, everybody. How's it going? So he's going to be manning questions on this end. Oh, you know what I didn't do, Dustin? What did As I always know, I always forget. I didn't oh, pull Nick. up Nick. Nick, 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 Nick Nickelodeon. Nick, 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 Nick. Nick so, All right, so let me pull up Nick here. Deep Thoughts by Nick. So uh, so we're going to do that, and I've got Nick uh, in Sarasota, Florida, and uh, he's going to be answering questions as well. If I can get this. There we go. I gotta shrink this up. Hello, you forgot me. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. All <laughs> Hello. right. Hello. Hello. So, so um, let me see here. I'm gonna shrink up some of my reference images because otherwise I can't see Nick, 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 Nick. There we go. There's a reference image there. Uh, but I'm back to my big. Um, I'm back to my big Cintiq today. So you can see. I've got the big massive monster. This is the one I love to work on. Um, it's nice and giant, and uh, if you can swing it, if you um, if you uh, are in the market for a you know a good size Cintiq, and this is something you 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 know you think you'll use all the time. I use mine obviously every day. Uh, then this is the way to go. You know, bigger bigger for me is when it comes to drawing. Bigger for me is better. It always it always is. And uh, like I said, I know it's a uh, it, it's a it's a bit mu much to bite off, but if you can swing it, it's definitely definitely worth it. So, um, but anyway, why don't we switch over to the to uh, the regular screen, Dustin? Uh huh. And here I've got this uh, I've got this image here that I've been working on, and I've just I wanted to clear out the silhouette. I've been kind of struggling with it actually, and I want oh, <laughs> I just choked on my on my own spit. Oh. I want to uh, maybe bring his tail up here just to bring something up and around. Oh, what version of Photoshop is this real quick? This is the latest version, CC. Uh, CC, CC, CC. CC. Oh, um, got to hydrate. Uh, this is the latest version. So here I've got, I want these characters to feel like they're being playful. And, uh, and so that's what I'm doing right here. And, um, I think it's going to work out. And you can see when I, when I first start these, I go really scribbly because I want, I don't want to waste time rendering. I want to make sure that everything kind of leads in. I want to make sure the composition is feeling good. Let me move some of this other stuff over. So I can read Nick's Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy. Ready for a question? I am ready for a question. 
Uh, I was drawing cute animal faces the other day, and my question is, what are the main tips and principles uh, for drawing young animals, cartoon style, to make them look cute, toddler age, versus making them look aged? Well, the main, the main thing to think about when drawing cute is proportion. So if we want to draw a baby, you know, a, a man, a, a human proportion is basically this, okay? We've got a nose that's about just under halfway down. You've got eyes that are about an eye width apart and about halfway up the head. We've got a mouth. A mouth. We've got a mouth. Of course we got a mouth. But um uh there's a, that's a generalized we'll give him some hair. There's a generalized, uh, very quick, proportioned adult, okay, or teenager. What you want for cute is you want that big cranium. You want round shapes, small, little ears. Get all of the proportions down low. Eyes, large. A baby's eyes are basically the same size as a as an adult. They just haven't grown into them yet. Your eyes really don't grow that much. Excuse me, Father, if I may intervene here real quick. Yes. Oh, am I cutting, getting cut off? No, no, no. It's it's the screen itself because we had it at a at a uh, higher res earlier. Oh, oh sorry. I just yeah. <laughs> I was trying to draw. <laughs> right. Are we still on the air? Uh, yes, we are. Okay. Just, yes. Just, Yes, I do have bricks under my Wacom. <laughs> That's my stand. There we go. I, uh, are we good? All yours. Okay, so back to drawing cute. So, um, so you want to keep all those proportions. Nice big cranium. Floofy, floofy hair. Like so. Let's make her, make him smile a little bit. Uh, and are you going to be in Scotland, eh? Uh, anytime this year? We are, right now, uh, I'm not sure that we will be in Scotland, uh, but um, uh, we'll see. And you want those, you know, little chunky body, little hands, little legs. Everything is proportioned, you know, think of a baby and the way a, ba a baby is proportioned. So, whereas a human is about eight heads high, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, here we got this cute little baby and you could do a baby about three heads high or even less. Maybe two and a half heads and you could end up with something really cute. But if they're standing, it's probably more like three. Like so. There's a diaper. Little arms. There's your shapes right there. So when you're drawing, so that's the same, so that's human. So if we were to do uh, an animal, let's say a cat, we are programmed to respond to those cute proportions. So whether they're human or a little cat, it's going to be the same types of proportions. Here, you got a little muzzle, big eyes, ears, tend to be a little smaller. This is a very young cub, but you can see but it's, a, it's the same, same proportions. Everything's the same as in a human. And why are you drinking iced water? Is it really hot in Florida? I like ice water. It's delicious. Stay hydrated. No, it's not hot today. I just like cold water. And it's actually really chilly outside, actually. Yeah. So there. So those are the things to keep in mind. Just keep those baby, you know, if you can think of a human baby proportion, and uh, that's what you want to do for your animals. 
Okay, let's see here. I got to move some of my image, my reference imagery around even more because I can't read what Nick has. Okay, question. How long should we study the bouncing ball before we move on to more complex animations so bad habits don't develop? Um, I don't know. You move on when you feel like you're ready. Once I got the bouncing ball animating to where the timing felt right, then, uh, then I moved on. And so that's what I recommend that you do. When you feel comfortable with it, then go ahead and get on out of there. Move on, get more complex stuff. Think about the, that flower sack. Why do most Disney artists have this uh, really round style and round shapes when they draw? Because I think, I think most of us learned our character design uh, shape, you know, as, as a shape-based language. We try to think of everything shape-based because our characters have to be drawn the same way every time. And uh, the best way to do that is to build them up with familiar shapes first. There we go. Get some nice little eye contact here. Eric asks, hey, Eric. Uh, did you watch any nature programs growing up? And if so, which was your favorite? My favorite was Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I watched that every week. And I watched a lot of the Disney uh, ones as well. But Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, for me, was awesome. And I loved it when Jim Fowler would go get, go get in the river and wrestle the crocodiles and and uh, Marlon Perkins would just sit there and tell him what to do. It's funny, years ago I ended up, uh, when we were doing Mulan, um, Jim Fowler is actually a great falconer. That's where he got his start. And we had the falcon in Mulan, and so uh, Jim Fowler came to the studio uh, and uh, demonstrated some falconry for us. And it was really cool, because you know, I grew up watching watching his shows, you know, as a little kid, and, uh, um, and then, you know, I ended up going out and having breakfast with him, and it was really cool. He walks with a limp because he got bit by a crocodile. <laughs> He's just one of these great adventure guys, you know, it's just really awesome. Sounds like one of your kind of guys. He's one of my kind of guys, <laughs> yep. What is cold in Florida? <laughs> Oh, man, it is so freezing here today. It's 55. <laughs> <laughs> I think the coldest it's gotten here in Florida was, what, 30? Oh, no, no, no. It's, we, I've, we, uh, I've, uh, At night, not, not during the day. But no, I've, I've been out. Uh, I remember one time it got down to 18. Really? Yeah, and that night that you and I, when you were a little kid, you and I slept on the beach. Was that 18? And I, I had to carry like, you up to the house. I thought that was like, that was like 20, 20. That was 22 degrees. I keep thinking it's, it's quote-unquote warmer. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm doing now is I'm just tying tying this image down. I've got this, this little tiger here that I like. Where are you reading these questions from? <laughs> oh, I've got them up on my screen up up here. If you go to that, can, can you see the screen up here on that on that camera? Got a little, got a little bit. Got Nick's. Yeah. So there's a Nick's there's a there. screen up here. Yeah. There's Nick right there. So this is uh, this is where I get the uh, so 55 Fahrenheit is about 13 Celsius. Thank you, Nick. Yeah. So Nick handles all the uh, questions while I personally handle the uh, Facebook questions. Yes. And uh, speaking of, did you ever study or uh, draw plants? Oh, you know, I, well, I draw I draw a lot of plants just from life, uh, but I've never really studied them. That's a good question. Yeah, I know I know a fair amount about my Florida Florida plants. So here I'm just roughing in very quickly and trying to simplify at the same time uh, this guy's stripes. 
without messing up. I want the stripes to accentuate his smile and not dilute it. So I'm trying to be really careful about how I lay these stripes in. Right, what do you think uh, about Into the Wild by Disney? Into the Wild? Yeah, the, the Disney uh, wildlife documentary. Now there's the movie Into the Wild in the book that I read that's... Was that Disney? With Emil Hirsch? Maybe. Uh, but that, I mean, it's not like... Unless that's a different... You might be uh, talking about something different. Yeah, because Into the Wild was one about the the kid that uh, yeah. hosted to Alaska, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Emil Hirsch starred in that. One of my favorite movies, Eddie Vedder did the soundtrack... Cold Hard Sun, baby. That's a good song. <laughs> yeah, somebody wrote about the uh, 15 degrees Celsius. Like, 15 degrees Celsius? That's dangerous summer weather at best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you visit Disney World much after you left Disney Company? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. I don't visit Disney. I love Disney. I just, first of all, I've never been a theme park guy. I've never liked theme parks. I don't like crowds. Got a little phobia about crowds. And uh, so I've never, even when I was working at Disney, you know, we, we'd go to the parks. When you guys were little, we'd, oh, your we mother would, would take you to the parks, but I was often not there. Yeah, but you would uh, you would come out to see us and sign us in. Yeah. And then every once in a while, like, especially if we were at the, uh, what was it, MGM Studios? Was that? Yeah. It was right next to that, right? Yeah. And we would uh, go backstage and see you at the uh, animation studio. Yeah. And then go back into the park. <laughs> so here I'm just kind of laying him in. I've, I've got, you know, once I rough something out, then I can sit back and relax and really kind of work out the details. Like this fur, for instance, you know, working out how that fur is going to flow off the side of the head. Is the 32-inch Wacom tablet uh, at, out? I've seen them on Amazon, but I'm not sure if it's the same one. They are out. Um, I'm pretty sure they are out. Let, let me put it that way. And um, I'm really hoping to get one. Because this, I mean, you can see how big this is. And this is, uh, this is a 27. So the 32's 4 inches bigger. 5 inches bigger. That's huge. <laughs> it's freaking huge. Yeah. How do you like that math? It's like four inches bigger. It's five inches bigger. <laughs> Uh-oh. We got little Max. He's standing in here. He doesn't usually stand in here unless he's uh, got to go to the bathroom. Uh. All right. So, there we go. So, I've got his body kind of roughed in. I'm thinking about what's going on underneath. Well, there's a shoulder blade right here. And where does that connect? Well, that connects right here to his shoulder, which is in the front. Four-legged animals, they have their shoulders moved to the front. And then we have our tricep in here. But he's, I don't want to make him too muscular because I want him to feel, I want him to feel like a 13 to 14-year-old kid. You know, the equivalent of. Will you do a course on farm animals or draw one of your next live stream? Sure. Yes, I will. How big is the canvas you usually work on, and how much do you zoom in to do the drawing? Well, the, this canvas today, let's I've, I've uh, kind of customized it. But uh, let's see, the image size today is 16 by 16. So, I, yeah, I wanted to do it square for Instagram. So this is 16 inches by 16 inches at 300 dpi. So I find that 300 dpi and keeping the dimensions above 10 inches gives me enough. I mean, you can see how far I can zoom in before it falls apart so if i can you know it gets pixelated right about in here you know so um you know i could blow this up to poster size and it would still hold together i often struggle with nailing that thick cornea on cats how would you do that in a cartoony style the thick cornea cornea i'm assuming you're talking about that dark area in front of the eye I don't know. I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about. But if you, if we do this, 
you know, I think about a cat's eye, you know, first of all, cat's eye just normally is going to, you know, they've got pupils just like ours, but then they've got this dark area right here in the corner of the eye, usually dark around the eye, or maybe a little dark up here. And then they've got their little nictating membrane and their, their, uh, their, uh, eyelids so what I do is I I try to find it when I kind of disnify it I push it towards a little bit more towards a cartoony shape and I usually go a little bigger see I I actually add an iris and make the white of the eye You know, so it feels a little more anthropomorphic. So there's that's kind of how I approach. Because a, a regular cat eye, whoops, will have a shadow going across if you know if it's if, uh, if it's on the, in the light. We can do a shadow across it here too, and we'll give it a little. Uh, TV paint, how many frames per second minimum do you work with? I work uh, 24 frames per second minimum. Oops. So there's there's the eyes like that. So there's a realistic eye on the on the left and a cartoony eye on the right. All right, back to it. Man, I gotta, I'm gotta. i trying to go fast today. Whoa, here's a big question. Uh, oh, oh, let's boy. see here. Uh, Eslakon? E-S-L-A-K-O-N. Eslakon uh, asks, I ordered a Cintiq 16 after the review of it that you did. Any general tips for using a screen display tablet compared to the old and two OS tablets? I'm hoping it feels closer to traditional drawing. It straight up does. I mean, there's no tips I can give you. Um, you're drawing right on the screen, so it feels like it's traditional. So that's that's why I uh, that's why I use them, uh, and I don't use the Intuos because um, I just feel so much more natural. So there, there you go. Um, Holden asks, could you do a realistic Lion King drawings around the time the remake comes out? That is an excellent. Capital idea, my friend. Capital idea. That is bravo, good sir. <laughs> bravo. Bravo. Nick, do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a great idea. We will do. We'll definitely do that. I love that idea. And actually, you can probably uh, try drawing one of the uh, characters you haven't tried yet, like uh, Mufasa. Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. Uh, do it again. So the stripes on the tiger here are very thin, especially around, and sparse, especially around the shoulders. Did you apply the local color with pen pressure, or just like that without any opacity and pressure? Say that again, Dustin. I'm reading exactly as it says. Do you, do you apply the local color with pen pressure, or, or just like that without... Uh, any opacity and pressure, like any, like... I do it pressure. with pen pressure. You do it with pen pressure? Yes. Lisa asks, hello, Aaron. Hello, Lisa. Uh, I would love to know what you think is the most effective way to become good at animation, especially for people who are just starting out. Animate a lot. That's the best thing you can do. Observe life. Uh, observe physics, real life physics, because that's what gives your animation believability. Um... Think about emotion. You know, try to get that into your animation, and uh, and animate a lot. That's really the the best thing you can do. Haley asks, can you make the zebra a golden zebra and maybe the golden tiger? No, no. <laughs> of course, I can. I might be able to do that. A golden zebra. I don't. I'm I'm trying to make them both realistic. Now, a a, a young a zebra does have kind of gold. Uh, tints in his uh, in his coloration. 
And Vedanta just joined in and said, Yay! Hey, Vedanta! Would you like to be the voice of the White Bear King? I am the voice of the White Bear King. Look at me. Roar. Roar. <laughs> Will you publish a book about drawing? Uh, well, that would be awesome. You know what? Uh, Nick and I have been talking about it. One of the things we've been talking about is taking a lot of my courses that we've done already and taking that information and putting it into book form. And uh, it's something that's going to take a long time to do, but it's something we're pretty serious about, and we, uh, we'd like to do that. So that's something, something that we're going to be looking at down the road. Uh, did you draw hyenas for The Lion King? I did not. The hyenas were done by Dave Burgess and Alex Cooperschmidt. I did Young Nala. I also did a little bit of Young Simba. And I helped out a very little bit with Adult Simba. And Haley says there is a quote unquote golden zebra. Just whoop, uh, to uh, Google. Yes, yes, I'm sure. But I think it's a it's a uh, it's a mutation though, isn't it? Genetic mutation. It's not natural. I mean, it, it happens like a king king cheetah. You know, they happen naturally, but they're it's a recessive gene, isn't it? Or am I wrong? I think so. It, it's, I think it's like the uh, almost like a uh, albino. Yeah, it's like a recessive. Yeah. Yeah, something say it like that. Yes. Yeah. It's melanistic. It's not albino, but it's something like that. So I'm just quickly scribbling in those those stripes. Twitch question. Do you ever feel too tired to work? Yes. <laughs> Especially over winter? Yes. What do you do in that case? I sleep. <laughs> you go into hibernation. I do. If I feel too tired to work, I don't work. I sleep. You go into hibernation and don't wake up till spring. <laughs> no, I, uh, I'm, I'm notoriously horrible for getting enough sleep. And, uh, and I'm so fat now. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of these guys that does <laughs> we can't breathe when I sleep and I got to sleep at me I got to get one of those mask things or drop some weight yeah. and uh, so I sleep terrible and uh, and so I'm tired a lot about f five o'clock every day um, I start falling asleep and then I come out of it, and then I'm fine. And then, then I can go until three in the morning. But um, uh, once <laughs> yesterday, I was drawing, and I fell asleep while I was drawing, and ended up with a line all the way across the <laughs> thing. <laughs> did you really? I did. <laughs> Question: Whilst whilst working at Disney, is this the software you used? And could you do a live stream of trying a different software, such as Autodesk, Sketchbook, etc.? Uh, I could try. I'm not familiar with them, but I could definitely try. And yes, Photoshop is the software that I use when I did my design work. What would you say is the most important thing about character design? Appeal. Your char appeal. A characters have to be appealing. And when I say appealing, they don't have to be cute. Because your villains can be appealing. You, appeal means interesting. So you want your characters to be interesting... And the way to get them interesting is to follow some of the fundamentals. So it really, all the rules and everything kind of fold into each other because you can't have appeal without having, you know, having hit some of the other fu fundamentals correctly. Uh Megan Perry asks, hi from, from the UK. Sorry hi. if this has been asked before. Uh, I'm self-taught and do mixed media art for fun. I love the idea of trying digital art, but it feels daunting. What would you recommend as a good first step into the digital art world? Well, I thought it was daunting as well. So I would recommend getting a tablet. Tablets are relatively... Uh, a relatively an inexpensive way to get into uh, that world 
And uh, I recommend like an Intuos tablet from Wacom. And um, I don't know what they uh, what their what their cost is. I don't think they're that bad. And um, and then you know having a decent computer, I recommend having a decent laptop where you can hook up your to your uh, Intuos and just experiment to see how it feels. Start drawing. Um, you need to get a, some software that's you know whether it's Photoshop or some of the other ones that are out um, and just and just give it a shot I mean for me I started in Photoshop I had friends um, you know art director friends and that sort of thing at Disney that also worked in Photoshop so I had a bit of an advantage in learning and uh, but I I, re I came to realize that the the best way to learn was just to experiment and try different things and so that's that's pretty much what I did and, uh, and I made a lot of discoveries. And then if, you, if it's something you like, then maybe somewhere down the road, you start looking into a pen display, which is what I'm using today. You want to switch the, switch the camera, Dust? Mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> so once again, this is a pen display. And uh, it's a much bigger investment. Um, but for me, it's very much worth it because of the amount of work that I do. Um, digitally so it's the best way to go for me you mentioned about the uh, the 16 inch right? yeah and i've got yeah the 16 inch uh cintiq which i demoed the other uh, on tuesday um that's i mean it's still not cheap it's 649 dollars us uh but it's you know it's still uh, a, a relatively inexpensive way to get into the pen display world Right there. Right there. Right there, baby. All right. So here I'm trying to get this mane to come around just right. Aaron, you showed us some of your skulls by Bone Clones. Yes. Is there something smaller than the, the life-size versions? Oh, uh, you know what? That's a good question. I don't think... That, they might have a few miniatures. I think they have some like, like mini, little miniature... Uh, like human skulls and things like that, but I don't know that they have a whole lot of miniature stuff, no. And what makes uh, uh, the difference in applying local color with pen pressure and without pen pressure? I'm still trying to decipher that question. I just, I, well, I, I'm assuming what the person's asking is, do I just lay it in with flat, no pen pressure, just flat color? I like having... I like using pen pressure because it very it varies up the color a little bit, and you know everything in nature, you know, it varies, right? And so that's how I want the uh, the color to go down on the imagery that I'm creating. So I'm liking that mane. That feels pretty good. I like this guy overall, actually. What do you think, Dustin? You like him? Sorry, what? What? I'm, I'm looking at What'd video. you say? Well, what? <laughs> Triple X. <laughs> no, I was just saying, what do you think? Do you like this one? Oh, the image? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. It's feeling, it's feeling, it's, it's feeling a little un... The composition's feeling a little funky to me. It doesn't flow very well yet. Trying to find some fluidity, but we'll just keep it a portrait at this point. Uh, if I was... What? The zebra kind of has that look in his face right now compared to the tiger. Like, Are you going to eat me? Who, like, who is this guy? <laughs> this guy's a psychopath. <laughs> Somebody help me. <laughs> I'm trying to give her a little bit of a smile are you working from a light gray tone today oh you know what i just forgot to tone it i started sketching and uh no I, I'd, I'd like to put it on the light gray tone i'm glad you reminded me there we go oh that feels better <laughs> oh me eyes me eyes is that what a tiger would do uh 
to a zebra in the wild gain his trust before he becomes dinner? <laughs> yes. That's exactly what he would do. <laughs> like, man, zebra, we've been great pals for about a, for about a week <laughs> now. now. <laughs> All right, so let's. Uh, I'm not going to put the stripes on the zebra yet. Uh, let's see here. Oh, YouTube question: When is the next charcoal demo? I want some dirty burnt wood. Gosh darn it! LOL. Maybe an elephant head. I love your work, Aaron, and Dustin's chipmunk singing. What? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't know when the next demo will be, but I'll take that to heart, and we'll do something soon. And uh, an elephant is a great idea, although that's a lot of texture to get done in one session. Uh, Twitch question: Will you share some tips for working marks into fur so that they don't don't uh, look just painted on? Yes, matter of fact, as I draw this and paint this, you will see that happen. So rather than talk about it, I will show you. It is happening. All right, show. Sure. Let's see here. Let's just get in here and do some color. I'm just going to start throwing down color. Start with this guy. Do you recommend some smaller size animal anatomy models? Uh, I don't have space for the large ones. Uh, sure. I mean, if that's something you need. I just, I started picking them up just because I think they're cool. I, I, uh. I didn't study them very much. I had I tried to study mainly books and you know the real thing, um, but yeah, if, if you don't have a lot of space, definitely get the smaller models. Yeah, you can get like the ones that you have here, like this big, like this big cat model or this. Yeah, I'm trying to model. I'm trying to remember uh, the name on them. Can, can you hand me one of them? Yeah. Without hitting my face with this. <laughs> hey, don't drop that. Oh God. Okay. Yeah, these are expensive. So, um, I've got these, and uh, this here, can you do uh, just the... Yeah, just one hand, close up. Oh, there we go. So this here is the, um, the muscle side of it, and then if I turn it around, you can see what the cat looks like with skin over the muscle. And I can't remember the person's name. He's French that I got these from. Uh, if, I'm sure if you Google cat anatomy sculptures, you'll, it'll come up. Um, sorry, I, I can't, off the top of my head, I can't remember his name. I'm drawing a blank. But uh, I love his work. I've gotten several of his sculptures. But there you go. They're really neat. Don't drop. Don't I won't do that thing. No, don't do that thing. <clears throat> All right. I really want that brush he's using for color. Ask your friend to sell or have Dustin make one like it. Yeah, we are I'm going to make one like it. I am so sorry. I just I can't ethically just go and sell my buddy's brushes. So I'm not going to do that. But I will make one similar. I've got some that are somewhat similar, but not quite the same. And in which way will the light and be coming in for this? Uh, I don't know yet. I'm going to wait till I get it down and then decide what's going to be best for the image. Question. Are your courses focused on all skill levels or for people with, a, with greater ability? Um, it varies. It does vary. I, th uh, I tend to think that they're for all skill levels. Although things like my animation course, uh, you're probably and you should probably be at least a, a, a um, an a intermediate animator. Um, but things like my animal drawing courses, my figure drawing courses, they're for all skill levels. YouTube question: How hard is it to get to a company to make a movie? No one answers that important question. How hard is it to get to a company to make a movie? Well, it depends on... If you're looking at the odds of everybody in the world that wants to do it, the odds are pretty low. 
Um, it's it's really difficult, and um, you know, big companies are only gonna they're only gonna bet their money on uh, filmmakers that have some kind of track record behind them. You know, somebody just somebody with an idea is not good enough, uh, and so it's just it it's that's just the nature of the business, and so film companies want to. Let's see here. I'm going to go maybe bluish. Um, it just... It, it helps to be within the company. Uh, to come in cold and pitch a movie, especially at a place like Disney or Pixar, that doesn't happen at all because they grow their movies from within. Uh, so it's, uh, it's tough. Um, it helps to be a writer in the industry and um, and getting some writing credits behind you. And then that helps get you in the door. That's how a lot of directors, uh, especially now, are getting in the door at Disney and Pixar and some of the other places. They're coming in as writers. And, um, and that works really well. But we also have a lot of people as, that are, you know, story people um, that were story people that are coming through and coming up in the ranks. And becoming directors. Um, I was an my background was animation. I got kind of lucky and came through in a different way. But that was a long time ago. You know, that's twenty years ago. So things are a little different now. What do you think about making both of them albinos for this picture? It would be very cool. Well, I, but the whole idea is I want stripes. Oh, Jared is. Uh, thank you, Nick. June's Anatomy, J-U-N apostrophe S. The Cat Anatomy sculptures are by Jun Huang. So I thought, I thought they were, I don't, I guess you're right. I thought there was a, it was a different person. Um, anyway, uh, there you go. Nick, Nick, do the thing. Uh, can you put up, the, can you put up the URL? Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Nick. Do the thing. Uh, yeah, it's uh, J U N, first name, se uh, last name H U A N G. Huang. 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 Jun Huang. I think that's how you say it. Jun Huang. So what I do, when I'm doing a, a zebra, I've done several zebras, I tend to do the stripes last. I do all of my modeling on the white, and then I put the stripes over the top. It works really well, actually. Getting rid of some of that... Uh, Underdrawing. Oh, it's just, uh, it's J U N, www.jun, it's Hunes, J U N S Anatomy, A N A T O M Y dot com. Hunes Anatomy. I hope he gets a boost out of this because his stuff is unbelievable. Well, I don't think he needs a boost because he's always, uh, he's always in back order because. There's such a demand for his work all the time. Uh, did this start as a lion? Because the tail is more lion-ish than tiger-ish. No, I know. I, I, it, it did not start as a lion. It started as a, a tiger. I just screwed up. I wasn't thinking and gave him... I gave him a... Uh, a lion tail. A lion tail. It's funny you mentioned that because I wasn't going to say anything. I was just going to change it later as I got to it. And yet someone caught it. Got to stay on your game, man. Good job. Good catch, whoever that was. That was... Tom Sender. Yes. <clears throat> Let me go back here. Let me change that. No, I just wasn't thinking. I just straight up just drew a, a lion's tail. Would you say zebras are black with white stripes or white with black stripes? Zebras are black with white stripes. Yeah? Yes. They absolutely are, actually. 
People always think that they're white with black stripes, but they are not. If you look at, they have a black seam that goes down the back and a black seam along the belly, and the stripes come off of that. So the stripes that don't touch are the white stripes. Not to be confused with the band, the white stripes. Okay. Annoying, huh? <laughs> just, just know what to do. <laughs> his hind legs are on the desk and his front legs are on my legs. It's like, I don't want to know. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello there. Any new questions for Daniel, you? hey Daniel. Daniel, uh, sorry, I got caught up in this. Daniel asks, how can I achieve a likeness in animated or cartoon characters? I mean, how do you make them look alike after uh, drawing? Oh, after drawing them several times. Well, that's it goes hand in hand with the question that came up earlier. Why we're so shape based? We draw everything shape based so that I can draw the character the same way. I use the same shapes every time. The, adding the details is easy, but making sure that your overall shape and silhouette is the same. And that's where it gets a little bit tricky. And so I always try to make sure that I use shapes to build my characters. That way I can do it the same way each time. And then I just add the details. So that's how we do that. Question. Most of the animation show reels online look quite all the same. Do you have some tips to find originality in your work? Yes. Do shots. A, a, a lot of the reels look the same, I think. Because, there's the white stripes. Awesome. Um, a lot of the reels look the same, in my opinion, because a lot of them are containing just mechanical walking tests and things like that. Find find um, animation that is going to be uh, emotional and uh, trans. It, 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 there was a train a change of idea in a shot or um, uh, a change of thought. Um, or motion, any of that, anything that's going to convey emotion in a shot, because then all of a sudden your characters are thinking, and that's what you want. You want to see characters that are thinking. That's what gets you. Uh, that's what makes your animation interesting, and your characters are interesting. You know, you want to see them thinking. And what was that, Dustin? They want to see thinking. Thinking. So there we go. So there's his little head. Getting local color in here. Uh, actually, I want to get the nose. The nose. What am I going to do here? I'm going to come back here. I am going to do a little salsing. A little salsing here. Yeah, many pets, and would you ever show them to us and perhaps draw them? I do have pets. She's sitting in her favorite spot right now. Which is right on top of a walking case. Yes. This is Ruby. Say hi, Ruby. She really does not want me holding her. No. She's trying to figure out how she's going to get away. <laughs> get off of me. And I've got a dog named Akeel, or Akeel, Akeel. Achilles. Just so I can say Achilles heel. And... <laughs> And I've got, uh, we've got a frog, and we've got another dog named Max, another cat named Kit Kat, and fish. 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 We've got fish. Actually, what do you call a fish without an eye? I don't know. A psh. <laughs> what? With no eye. A psh. <laughs> psh. That was really bad. One of my favorite YouTubers, he was going through like the worst jokes. And that was... <laughs> do I ever draw? Do I ever draw uh, dinosaurs or other prehistoric creatures? Uh, you know what? Not usually. I haven't. I, I mean, I have in the past. I just it's not something I normally do. There. So let's go ahead and start adding some some light and sh shadow. 
I'm going to create a new layer and set it to multiply. We'll get some background color in here in a minute. Are you not going to add the, uh, the zebra's uh, stripes? I'm going to add his stripes after I add shadow. Uh... After I add shadow. Actually, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go ahead and add the stripes now. I'm just going to put them right on over the top. So many contacts. Achilles' heel is a, is a good one. My friend named her Gimli, so she can say, Come along, Gimli! <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say that the Achilles' heel was my idea. It was actually, uh, he used to be my daughter and son-in-law's dog. Achilles. Achilles did, and um, they named him. And uh, but we, I ended up with him because they moved into an apartment where they couldn't have pets. So now he's mine. He's my best buddy. Whenever I hear Achilles, I keep I keep thinking of Hunchback of Notre Dame with the dog, not dog, but the horse. Achilles, <laughs> Achilles, sit, and he sits on the guard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at Nick. Look at Nick. Set. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Probably for the fish joke. Uh, <laughs> or Achilles. Or Achilles. So I'm looking at reference right now. I don't have zebra stripes memorized in my head as far as how they go. In high school, I had a frog named Fat Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny Lamps. <laughs> hey, fat Tony! That's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's for Dustin's fish joke. <laughs> the fish joke. Yeah. The fish. fish. <laughs> I bet Achilles would take an arrow to the heel for you. <laughs> that's my spotlight. Must he, be funny. he would. He's a really good dog. And he's my shadow. Man, he does not leave my side. Well, right now he's sleeping, but he... He's uh, hanging out outside for a little bit. Yeah. There we go. Oh, Jonathan's watching. He says, hey, Uncle. Hey, Dusty. Hey, Hey, hey Jonathan, my nephew. My man. So some of these stripes are going to go up into the main of the zebra. You got anything for me, Dustin? You're awfully quiet yeah, over there. Do your job. Do the just, thing. It was just a bunch of name comments left and right. But um, <laughs> I got, got a question. Dustin, do the thing. <laughs> Ask me questions. Do the thing. <laughs> Dick, do the thing. Uh, any reasons to do the stripes or shadows first? Uh, What's the difference between doing the stripes before or after? Well, shadow? I I used to do it all in one layer. That's why I was doing the stripes second. But um, there's no reason. That I can do it either, either way. That's why I decided just to go ahead and do the stripes now. Because I'm going to do the shadows over the tops of the stripes anyway. Uh, what breed is Max? He's a, a, a toy poodle. He's right here. Yeah, pick, pick him up. Hey, Dustin, pick up the dog. Pick up the, uh, the thing. Hi. And he's 13 years old. Here, let me see him. Oh, you got a camera? You got a shot of him? Yeah. There he is. There he is, yeah. Hello, Maxie. He's 13. He's a cool dude. He's an old man. He's so small, though. Yeah. <laughs> That he oh. is, and he's about ready to start barking. I think he was down. <laughs> I wrote, that's a gerbil. <laughs> 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 that's 
That's about right. <laughs> Tom wrote that. <laughs> That's a gerbil. <laughs> you have a bottle of whiskey in your art room? You know what? I don't. Normally, I'd have a bottle of vodka. Who? But the vodka. But no whiskey. I'm not a whiskey drinker. Can you tell us a random fact? Can I tell you a random fact? Did you know that when you drive down the road at night, you can find spiders along the side of the road by shining the light? And when you see a little glitter back, just like a, a, like a raccoon or another animal in the forest, its eyes shine back light. Spiders' eyes shine back light. So when you drive down the road, if you see a little sparkle of light along the side of the road, stop and get out, there's a spider. How's that for a random fact? That's how I used to catch spiders at night. And we actually would go catch spiders at night. Like Is that. it common to find spiders on the side of the road? Yeah. And there because the spiders come out at night, the, the ground spiders, uh -huh. like wolf spiders and trapdoor spiders, they'll come out at night uh, to hunt. Well, not trapdoor because they, they have a trapdoor, but um but other spiders will come out at night to hunt. Interesting. Yes. Yes it was. So here I gotta get these stripes working right. Every time I hear spiders, I think, keep thinking of the movie Eight-Legged Freaks. Uh, we'll do another movie with Disney if they ask you. Would I do another movie with the, the Disney if they ask me? Um, well, first of all, they won't. Uh, they've got a really big backlog of directors making films. Um, uh, it really would depend on the movie. I love the niche that we've created with our business. I really love what I do right now. And, um, and making short films like Snow Bear. Snow Bear is still happening. Making short films like that. And uh, um, let me label this a stripe layer. Um, and, you know, traveling around the world and teaching and all that. Uh, I really love that. I love doing that. Uh, and, you know, it'd be hard, I'd be hard-pressed to have a project come along that would pull me away from it. Why would you want to catch spiders and what would you do with them? It was just a gimmick. I don't know. I'm, 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 a, I'm a guy. I'm a guy. I'm a guy. <laughs> it's actually my personal question here, but whenever you release them, do they chase, chase after you? No. No. And I, I, uh, I wouldn't catch them. I shouldn't say that. We would, we would stop and... You know, and we'd see how, you know, we'd try to find big ones just to, just to, just to see what they look like. Huh. Yeah, it's kind of cool to be able to drive along the road and go, hey, there's a little sparkly light along the side of the road. That's a spider. And you get out and sure enough, there's a spider. Remember when we saw that giant tarantula <laughs> yeah. walking, it, walking down the road on the mountainside? Yes. I was like, what is that big dot on the road? I that thought was it was a crab <laughs> at first. Like, what's a crab be, doing be, out there? Yeah, being the idiot that I was. Like, that had to be at least the size of, like, the palm of your hand or something. It oh, was yeah, huge. he was a big dude. He was a big one. I should be putting the stripes right there. What scares the living crap out of you? Uh, the safety of my family. But other than that, there's nothing in nature that scares me. Because you just give it, you give it a wide berth. You respect it, you know? Uh, what's our current local time right now? Our current local time is one fifty nine. We are at almost 2, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're one hour into our uh, into our live stream. Eat guys! How big are the spiders there? Very big. We get some big ones here. Now they're not, you know, they're not Amazon bird eating spider size, but we get some good sized spiders. The way you pronounce "eat" <laughs> may almost sound like you're trying to do a Cartman impersonation. Okay. 
You mistook a spider for a crab? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was huge. It was really huge. How was uh, CTN Expo this past year? Oh, CTN was awesome. We got to see a lot of our friends. We got to reconnect with a lot of, uh, just a lot of, uh, just a lot of great people. It's, it's the one event a year that we get to go to where we can really connect with everybody. And and, for, and the chance where all of us get to go. Yeah. And I get, I tend to have a little too much fun, but it's, <laughs> it's a blast. That's it, Tan. It's, it's one of those very few trips where it's, where it's a mix of both business and for fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't, don't get me wrong. It's a, I'm, it's a nice mix. I'm going to have fun. <laughs> Guaranteed. So you can see I'm very quickly putting these shadows in. Shadows. What am I saying? Stripes. I'm in the shadows. Mm. Have you ever encountered a huntsman spider? No. That would scare the crap out of me. And yeah, I you know, now we found something that's Yes, scary. and that you know what? I, I don't get scared of spiders. Um but I'll tell you what, going to Australia and coming across a huntsman or New Zealand, I can't remember uh, um which it is. Maybe it's both. But coming across a huntsman, even though they're harmless that would, they're huge. They're monstrous. They're like bigger than tarantulas? Uh, well, they're as, they're not as uh, heavy bodied, but their legs are just. Uh, they're, yeah. So they're kind of like extra large, uh, day long legs. In yes, in a sense. In a sense. No, but they've got more. Look up a huntsman. Look up huntsman. You'll see what I'm talking about. Not Snow White and the huntsman. No. You'll see what I mean. Oh yeah. Forget about it. Yeah. Now you got to see it compared to like an a, a, an object that you can tell the size. Megan says you can catch a bunch of earthworms by using an electrified prod and shocking the ground. That is absolutely right. It doesn't work in sand though because it doesn't connect conduct electricity. Yes. <laughs> see. That's what I'm talking about. Basically, fits right in the palm of your hand. How would you like that, Dustin? Honestly, if I knew it wasn't going to harm me or anything, I'd be, I'd be fine with it. Just like oh yeah, no, I'm from a distance. I walk up to it like if it instantly like popped in like right in front of my face. Yeah, it's the surprise like, that us, gets you. It, yeah, the surprise. I'd be like, oh crap. There was a uh, time. Remember when I went out to the shed to, to mow the lawn and I opened up the shed door and there was a five foot rat snake sitting on top of the door and I opened it up and I scraped scraped him off the top of the door and he just went <laughs> and just landed on my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> I, I completely forgot about that. I was there. Uh, well, I, you were living at the house. You were just, yeah, you know, actually you were a little kid. So you probably don't remember <laughs> it. But, and I don't, not, I'm not afraid of snakes either, but when one just falls out of the sky and lands on you, it, it kind of freaked me out. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we've got we've got local color all laid in. It's taken an hour. Once again, all my jibber-jabber. Hey, stop all that jibber-jabber. Jibber-jabber. <laughs> okay, Aaron, we stop got... Stop doing the thing. <laughs> stop doing the thing. We got stripes now. We have stripes. We got the... <laughs> Nick, we have stripes. We got the, the white stripes. All right, so now we're going to go to multiple. <laughs> 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 remember, remember that scream he lets out in the movie? Like, I, I gave it, it hit that pitch. It's the it's highest high. pitch. Nick is alone. Nick is playing <laughs> Nick is playing the <laughs> Home it, Alone. Show it, show it. I don't you know can, how to show it. Oh, that's right. I can bring it down here. Yeah, bring it down. Bring it down. <laughs> That right there. <laughs> I just love that he actually did that with a tarantula on his face. And that's a real tarantula. Yeah, that's a real tarantula. That, kudos to him. He was probably comfortable with it. It was just like... <laughs> just the acting prop chops on it was just is 
funny. I gotta get that nose real quick. Other than the Home Alone subject, I personally, my favorite bit of him is in the sequel, which just gets hit over and oh, over I know. by the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> he was awesome. Why do you think uh, 2D animation movies don't appeal to the general public nowadays compared to 3D? I think 3D, I think 3D gives a more, uh, to a lot of people, I think it's a more lush world, a more, uh, believable world, I guess. And I'm, I'm just guessing too. I mean, I could be wrong. Uh, I think the, in general, I think, you know, I think the studios stopped making 2D films too soon. I think if we had changed up the formula of making big Broadway musicals and started doing other things like Pixar was doing, you know, which is basically just getting original, uh, I think maybe the the path would have been a little bit different for uh, 2D films. But um, I, I do think what happened uh, was that my opinion was that the formula got old and uh and people wanted something different we were doing musical after musical after musical after musical and uh and broadway-esque you know and i think that's that ended up uh became become what some uh what's the phrase when um when an actor is uh set to like a a specific role Pigeonholed? Huh? Pigeonholed? Mm. A yeah. what? When they get pigeonholed into a different... They, they, they do the same thing over and over again. They keep getting... Typecast. Ca that's typecast. It. Oh, yeah. yeah so, Which yeah, kind of means so, the so same thing. So when it comes thing. to Disney, like with the 2D animation, they end up... The 2D animation end up becoming a typecast for for musical princessy uh, movies majority of the time. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's and, true. And I feel that the 3D kind of. Oh, it was something new. A little bit. It was I mean, something it's still new. Princessy most of the time, but. Not always. Not always, but it's still kind of. Hanging yeah. Back and forth. I mean, like, we do have movies like uh, Big Hero Six. Yeah. Things like that, but. Question: Have I seen Guardians of the Galaxy? Yes, I have. I would love to see your rendition of Yondu. It would be fun to have, to have to glowing arrow and every have to, to uh, be. Oh yeah, the guy with the, the blue guy, right? Yeah, the blue guy with yeah. the with the giant thin head. Yeah, I I actually he's one of my favorite characters. I'm Mary Papa Joe. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I remember watching that. Like seeing that scene in, in the theater and everybody just burst in line. I know. <laughs> Have I ever worked at Pixar? I uh, indirectly. I mean, I was working at Disney, and uh, and so we would we would go back and forth. We would uh, do note sessions up at Pixar, and they would do note sessions down with us. We'd have meetings up there. I remember screening uh, Wall-E before it came out to give notes for Andrew Stanton, who is the director. But uh, beyond that, we didn't. Uh, I didn't really do work at Pixar. No. I mean, John Lasseter was my boss, and Ed Catmull, Ed Catmull, and uh, so there was that. But really, I didn't. Uh, we didn't go up there that much. Uh, Twitch question: Do you have a tip for choosing color digitally? I'm pretty confident with traditional media. But whenever I try painting digitally, I get overwhelmed by the color range I can pick from, and it tends to look unnatural. I try to stay within kind of a triadic area. So I don't, um, once I pick, uh, I, I tend to think of color in warm and cool. And, um, and one of the things I do when I'm working digitally is I find that local color first, like we just did. That's going to keep your color based in you know whatever you, you can control it a lot better when you just think about man my glasses are so dirty um when you just think about the local color first you can keep it under control and then once you have it kind of harmonized like i like here i purposely went warm obviously with the orange cat but then i when i put the uh, the white down for the for the zebra 
Um, I never go white, white, first of all. So, uh, and, I, and I made sure that the zebra was a cool, a blue, so that they played off of each other a little bit better. So I'll do, I, I really play with warm and cool a lot. That's a big part of the way I approach color. And, uh, and then shadow, you know, shadow really helps uh, harmonize things as well. It, may, it brings everything together. Uh, what was John Lasseter like uh, to work with? John Lasseter was a great guy. Um, I never had any of the problems that you see in the news right now. Um, he uh, <clears throat> he was he was a an, a, a genius in the room. Um, he was worked very hard, and uh, I would have days when I'd come in to pitch a sequence to him, and he'd fall asleep right in front of me and it was kind of hard but then I finished the pitch and he gave me notes and he was right on the money he, he listened he heard the pitch <laughs> so it was pretty wild he's like how, how are you doing this yeah he's he was pretty superhuman and uh but I like I said I never but I'm a you know I'm a man I'm a male I didn't see the stuff that was going on or uh I didn't encounter it firsthand so, uh, but he was, uh, he was, uh, pretty genius to work for. Nothing new from Nick? No, other than the spider that just keeps screaming, the guy that just keeps screaming with the spider. <laughs> Harry! <laughs> Harry! <laughs> so I'm, I'm quickly laying in shadow. I do this very quickly. Actually, of the of those two characters, personal question: of those two characters, which one's your favorite, Harry yep. or Mar? Well, I can't, I can't, I, can't, <laughs> I don't know, because they're both so funny. And Joe Pesci, like considering on all the Joe Pesci's awesome. The, considering of all the movies that he that he does, like that one is probably like one of the. One of his most comedic, I think. Yeah. Like my cousin Vinny. Yeah. Okay, one of the things I want to do on the stripes is, uh, like, the stripes are not all... Blah, 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 where are they? There you are. The stripes are not all just black. On a zebra, especially on a young one, they tend to be a little bit brown. And so what I'm going to do is grab the stripes. I'm going to lock down... Lock it down, and then I'm going to just start to color. See that? I can hit just the stripes. And up in here. So when are you getting your new And on the feet? snout. Um, I don't know yet. I'm hoping... Uh, They'll be coming out soon, but uh, um, I don't I don't know when they're coming here yet. When I'm going to have one available yet? Man, I can't talk when I'm trying to think. <laughs> been there. I think we've all been there. So I'm just adding a little bit of varying color within the stripes, just a little bit, just to add a little interest. There we go. That feels wunderbar. Wunderbar. Have you ever had those thought processes where you're trying to think of one thing and then somebody asks you a different question and like you're you're trying to figure out what to process first and your mind just go, just goes blank and it, like, it uh, shorts uh, out. <laughs> yeah. It shorts out completely. YouTube question, how do I feel about everyone copying my your style? Everyone copying my style? I've never seen anyone copying my style. I mean, I see people learning from my courses and that thing is, I think is great. I don't think of it as people copying my style. I mean, when I was young, I was, I copied Frank Frazetta and anybody else I could get a hold of, and it helped me learn. And as you mature as an artist, you, your own style develops. And so copying an, another artist's style, to me, is more of a, it's more of an honor. I'm, I'm honored that someone wants to follow what I do, and then I know over time they're going to find their own style. 
What do you think about Disney remaking all their own movies? Like, do you think it's a cash grab or adapting for a new generation? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it's both. I think, come, come on, Disney Disney is in the business of making money, just like any big business. So you can't, you can't fault them for that. Um, but at the same time, um, I think we are, and I think the, make, remaking those films is, a, you know, you don't have to, it's very minimal rewriting, obviously. Um, so there is a bit of a cash grab there. But I also think that they're ready to be remade for a new audience. So, you know, I, 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 I think it's cool. You know, and, uh, oops, that's wrong. And I'm, uh, I'm kind of excited to see what happens with, like, with Lion King and, and whatnot. And whatnot. <laughs> so I'm just hitting some lighting right now. Would you recommend learning lighting, shadows, and color while working digitally? Or should we learn it through traditional means first? Well, if you... If, if, traditional... If you're saying... Ah, see, I'm trying to talk and do this at the same time. <clears throat> you got to look at real life. So that's traditional, right? So, I mean, the, the best way to learn lighting is to see how... Lighting works in real life. You have to do that. And so, um, you know, observe real life as often as you can and, uh, and apply it. You know, I, that's, that's what I do. I'm always looking at different lighting situations and taking either mental note or I, or I sketch it. You know, but that's how I learn. And, and I'm still learning. I'm 50 years old and I'm still learning. And I'm hoping I'll keep learning until the day I die. I mean, I, I think as soon as an artist thinks that they've they've got it all figured out, then they're they're dead as an artist because they're so much of being an artist is 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 the journey of learning, and uh, and it's uh, that to me is that's why I do what we do because I I love making discoveries and creating different things that. Maybe I didn't know I could do before, but I've made some kind of lighting discovery. I've made some kind of compositional discovery or whatever it might be. And, and it sends me down this path that maybe I hadn't thought of before. So that to me is kind of cool. Uh, last stream you said something about you and Proko. Uh, can we get more details about that? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now Proko is going to be coming out here in March. And uh, we're going to be creating... Uh, I'm going to be creating a little course for him, and we'll probably do a little bit of a YouTube video thing, but we'll be getting together in my studio, I might add, in my studio in March. So I'm pretty excited about that. What is your opinion of cute musical characters that that do break all the rules, such as really stretching or disregarding anatomy altogether. I think it's fun. I mean, if you look at any Warner Brothers cartoon, that's exactly what they do. Warner Brothers and Warner, you know, Roger, Roger Rabbit, you know, I animated Roger Rabbit in several shorts and just had a blast doing it. And, you know, it breaks all the anatomy rules, but that's a, a, a specific style of animation that's just a blast. Do you have a favorite Disney villain? I um, I I like uh, 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 Maleficent is probably my favorite. Classic. Yeah, I thought she was pretty awesome. YouTube question: Hello, I, as a novice artist, am interested in in, in interested to know how much time to normally spend on one picture that's um that's that's like asking what does red smell like it's it, you can't it, it really depends on the picture that you're creating right so um it's very subjective so whatever it your picture is going to take whatever it takes if i'm working on a giant sistine chapel image it's going to take a lot more time than if i'm sitting there you know working on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So, 
um, it really depends on what it is that you're working on, and it really, it just, it, it's, it, it, it's, it's whatever the image requires. I'm, I wish I had a better answer for you, but um, it really is. That's the that's the best thing I can tell you. You want to, you know, you don't want to overwork your imagery, and that might be part of what you're asking me. And that's once again that's subjective as well, and um, it just comes with time that you'll start to understand when to stop. Uh, much like my talking, I don't know when to stop talking. I can't <laughs> stop talking. I'm, 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 I'm waiting for you to stop so I can ask the next question. <laughs> The next question. Um, got a tech question here. I want to begin learning illustrating. Do I go with a tablet like iPad or Surface or Cintiq and why? Uh, well, it depends on how mobile you want to be. Um, I think if you want to be super mobile, I think a, a, probably an, an iPad is probably pretty good. Um, I My favorite tablets though are are Cintiqs and so I really recommend that if you're going to be you know working at home if you can afford uh, a mobile studio pro which is completely portable then you know go with that as well um, yeah there's a lot of different there's a lot of different options it, it, if you're looking for something that's a bit cheaper then you know I would stick with the iPad uh, if you want something a little bit more professional this here's the mobile studio pro oh yeah here's this is a there's a mobile studio pro here this one's a little bit older but this is one that i have um that was like what a year two years old yeah what does red smell like i don't know it smells like strawberries <laughs> does it does it Will the shadows be more greenish here since the tiger is reddish? Mm, well, it depends on the temperature of light too, doesn't it? But I'm I'm going with warm light, and I'm just doing a little side light here. I probably should uh, start thinking about um, background color as well. I want to get that in there, so I'm going to do that. But this has been kind of fun. I'm, I'm digging this. I'm going to go... We'll start with the green. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're only an hour and 23 minutes into it. So I've created a layer under everything. And I'm just getting some color in here. I'm just laying down this base green color and I'm going to work over the top of it. Maybe go a little bluer, maybe a little darker down here. And let it get warmer as we go up. I'm just going to work it a little bit. Twitch question. Would I rely, I, I would really like to know how many key frames you had to make per day when you worked on Pocahontas or Milan? Well, it's not really how many key frames we had to do. It was, we had to, we had to keep, uh, our work was measured in footage. So we had to do a certain number of feet of film uh, per week. That's how we, that's how we reached our quotas. And uh, there are 16 frames in every foot of film. And, uh, here we go. And um, and so, I, you know, usually they wanted about five feet a week, which is really, really minimal. That's that's pretty easy to hit. Um, I tended to, I tried to hit more like ten or twelve, sometimes fifteen feet a week. That was my goal. Um, and so, uh, that's kind of how we measured it. We really didn't measure it, like I said, in. Uh, key frames per day uh, it was really about getting you know a certain shot done for the week and doing it that way and uh, or you know sometimes the shots are huge and you gotta you gotta budget it over a couple of weeks for 
for me, drawing is like meditation. Is it for you too? It is. Aye. Aye. It's like meditation. <laughs> in the left, in Scotland. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want to go this bright. I'm going to try it. Oh, it's not too bad. Any character depth tips? Character what? Depth. Like depth. Uh, any tips on that? Um, like probably like uh, about the character story or something. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're talking about, I, I'm not sure if you're talking visual or or background. Um, let's see. Sorry, hold on. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. He's thinking. Um, I'm not sure I follow the, what the question is. Character depth tips. I'm not sure I follow. I'm. Um, if you're talking, you know, as far as just knowing your character, if that's what you're talking about, I always recommend coming up with a backstory for your character so that you yeah, understand both, who they are. Yeah, uh, saying both visual and background depth. So just like overall character. Yeah, so I mean, you really want to understand your character before you get into animating it. Before you ever start to draw, know who your character is. Write your character. That's one of the first things I tell people in the character design class. Before you start to design anything, you have to know who and what it is that you're designing. So read the character, read the script, write even more background to them. F flesh them out so you understand who they are. That's probably the biggest thing you can do for them. Ricardo asks, I looked at Glenn Keane's animation of Ariel singing Part of Your World. It's very complex with lots of panning around her. For a shot so complex, would an animator leave lots to the assistants? No. Uh, no. You For something that complex, the animator really wants to figure it out as much as possible. And, um, and uh, where we are. There it is. Where are we? You hear I said yeah. where where we where we are. Where, where we are is where we are. <laughs> um, no, we would I we would spend a lot of time really fleshing that out, making sure that it was um, pretty pretty worked out. There we go. That's about where I want it to be, right there. Are you a fan of uh, Avatar The Last Airbender or Legend of Korra? Uh, no. I am not. I don't know the... Uh, no. I, Dustin has told me about him, but yeah. I'm not. I mean, yeah, I'm a really big fan of the of the series, and uh, that's where I got the inspiration from. The Nick to the Thing. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, do the thing. <laughs> Uh, which is your favorite animal? Uh, bears, big cats, you know, anything that you would imagine would be, I mean, because you guys see me what I draw. See what I draw. Jill asks, what's the longest shot you've ever animated? Um, oh, shoot. Probably a few, a, a, like a minute or two um, a, for a single shot. The credit sequence during the Rescuers Down Under, uh, Wilbur is ti it's tiny little booger animation, but it goes on for the entire credit sequence. I animated all that. Uh, rest in peace, white dot on ear. <laughs> yeah, that'll get fixed. I think that's the white dot behind the ear. That's something that uh, they think. Um, cats have that in order for the them to follow each other or something like that. I think that's what I heard at one time. So I can see each other better and follow each other from behind. What satchel do you use uh, when you go outside? What? Which what? What, what satchel do you use? Like, satchel? Like, yeah, like oh, carry right, bag. Grab it. The red one? Yeah, either, either one of them. One. But the red one. I use... It's called an Artie. This is my time to plug my friends at Lilo Rush. Got it. So these are all handmade right here. This is uh, one of several Arties that I own. And um, they're awesome. I'm going to back up just a little bit. So like I said, they're all handmade. This one's denim. 
and uh, and they're very they're all, all completely customizable. So they open up with lots of great pockets inside. Can you see all that okay? Yeah. And uh, I keep all my pens and everything in here, or watercolors, or whatever the case may be. Uh, and then inside, I keep my sketchbooks right here. And uh, there's extra pockets in the back. I could keep more uh, paints and that sort of thing. And um, they're by Lilo Rosh. That's L I L O R O S H dot com. Lilo Rosh dot com. And like I said, they are all complete. They're all handmade and completely customizable. I, I had one about four times this big made up for myself. Well, I sent them drawings of what I was I was looking for, and we worked it out together. And boom, I got it done. So that's what I use, and I take them all over the world. I've that one's pretty new, but I've got a blue one that I've had for about three years, and it barely has a scuff on it. So they're they're pretty amazing. It is. It is. It is. It is indeed. I'm sorry, but I cannot wear these shoes because shoes make me fall down. Fall down. All right. Where am I? Ready to go? I love the images you created ages ago where you drew a character into a photo environment. Could you do some more of that soon? Sure. Yeah, I would definitely do that. I I like doing those, like the the elves and all of that. I'm assuming you're talking about, which I absolutely love doing. Let me add. I'm going to do this. <laughs> I wrote. I'm going to draw now. Tell me one thing I'm going to draw, and I'm going to draw it. <laughs> uh, draw. I don't know what to tell you. Draw, draw, make up a, a, a brand new creature and draw that. A, that's a believable creature. YouTube question. Do you recommend trying to draw as accurately as possible before starting or jumping into, or jumping into personal work? Some people always emphasize fundamentals. How accurate should you draw before jumping into your own style? Well, it sounds like you're saying that your own style is not accurate drawing. So I'm not quite understanding uh, what you're asking. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's a little odd. I'm not quite following what you're asking, but um, I think I'm. If, if you want to draw representationally, then you should always be studying, you know, the real deal, the anatomy and and everything else. Um, that's just going to help you out in the long run. Um, and as you do that, your style will grow. I mean, you can, you can draw realistically and still have your own style. So I'm, I'm getting a little confused on what the, what the question is there. I'm sorry. So here I'm just adding some highlights in here. Try to go kind of quickly through here now. What was that? What was what? I heard a like a coin. I don't know. Must have the chair. So I'm hitting some highlights in here. This is just going to be a, a kind of a rough sketch, but it's going to be fun. I don't mean, don't mean to be picky, just a question. Do tiger sketch stripes so close to the tip of the tail? Yeah. As far as I know, they do. You know, tigers are like people. They're all different. But I could be off. I could be completely off. I see something here. Uh, let me see this guy. No. There we go. Should they follow anatomy and be super technical or jump right into their own thing? Learn the foundations to draw with your own work better? 
once again, I mean, one goes hand in hand with the other. I, you can't, I can't, I don't think you can do one without the other. So if you're wanting to do representational work, you have to do, you have to work the fundamentals, which is anatomy and all that stuff. And then, you know, you, yeah, work on your own style as well, but don't break the rules until you know the rules. That's basically my, my two cents there. Uh, when will Aaron play guitar for us? <laughs> I will do. I will play guitar at some point, but I'm here to draw pictures for you guys, not music. <laughs> How about you start giving us in-stream exercises? <laughs> <laughs> in-stream exercises. Well, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe out. <laughs> Obviously, you love to draw animals. If you had to animate a fantasy creature, which would you choose? I love dragons. 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 I always love dragons. So here I want a little bit of orange reflected up under the under the chin there. Feel that orange light bouncing off the the fur. Uh, when you visit the zoo and see an animal that you never study the anatomy for, what do you do? Uh, you try to relate with things that you've studied or focused that you've studied before, or focus more on your observation? I focus on my observation. I sit and I very much just look at the animal and just observe and just soak it in. I look at proportion. I look at uh, comparative anatomy, which is, you know, how does it parts, how does its parts relate to my parts? Because that really helps with my understanding of the animal. And, um, and then I go from there. I'd love to there see what dragon you would add uh, to How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, that would be fun. I really, I really wanted to work on that film. I love that movie, and I really Is love. There, I like Dean Dubois as well a lot. Did the third one come out already or no? No. It's not out yet. So here I'm just going to give him a little light, just a little reflected. Whoops, that's not the right layer. I'm not sure that this is the right background that I want. I might want something a little darker. Just a little bit. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not digging. I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go a little. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna try something. You going to try something? Something. Something. All right. I'm going to pick up the energy here. Pick up that energy. Just darken, just to get them to pop a little better. Just putting a little gradient on that background. Just to get them to pop a little bit more. Maharshi, Ma, Maharshi on YouTube says, Fun fact, tigers are the only cats that are completely striped. They've got stripes on their skin as well. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Really? Where would new artists get work experience in concept art? Um, well, that's different studios. I mean, there it's it really depends on. Uh, well, that's a good question. It, it's it really does depend on on you know where the work is, right? So, um, let's see here. That's what I want. I'm going to combine these two layers. You know, there's small studios, big studios. You just got to get your portfolio out there. There we go. I'm going to redo this a little bit. 
get the right color in here. Sorry, my my question answering goes downhill when I'm trying to figure out when I'm having a a crisis of imagery here. So this is going a little bit slower. You're starting to hit those uh those finer details. Yeah. I don't know where this is supposed to go. But as far as yeah, as far as getting that that work experience, you really just got to pound the pavement and, and, and the other thing you can do on uh, is, is keep a great, um, social media account because people watch that. I mean, that's, that's really how people are getting seen nowadays, Instagram and, and those types of things. And those are really important. They're really important actually. And, uh, and I mean really important. There we go. What's the most original in character you have seen that also worked? The like, most what? Like care like uh, character development or character design? Oh, that's a wow, that's a that's a good question and a tough question. I've never I don't know. Um that you have personally seen. Yeah, I understand that. I I don't know. Uh you know, I think and uh, one of the most amazing animation I'd seen, uh, probably in my entire career, was in the Thief and the Cobbler, the original, um, with Richard Williams animating. He did this animation of the of the uh, magician. Is it the magician? The uh, Vincent Price did the voice for, and everything's on ones, and he's got extra fingers, and he's doing these cards and it's just it's it's I don't know how he did it it's just unbelievably beautiful animation and I'll never forget that it's just stunning is so it, it's the thief and the cobbler check it out is it possible to finish everything in one single layer oh sure I just don't recommend it I just don't recommend. I, I like having. I like using different layers because it gives me control. I am so, the captain now. I am the captain now. I want control. YouTube question: What's my main goal with CreatureArtTeacher.com? My main goal is is to create affordable art lessons across the planet. That's our main goal. I want people that want to learn art, that want to make a career at art, that might not have an opportunity to go to college or if they're looking for a, a, a more affordable um, alternative, then I want them to be able to come to us and find that alternative. I at least want to be a really strong supplement to higher education. And, and, uh, and I, I really want... Especially, like I said, people that are in areas that might not be able to go to college, I want them, but they can they can pull up on the computer um, some art lessons and learn something from us. Then that's that's important to me. I came from a very poor family, and my family didn't have enough money for me to go to college, and so I submitted to the government. I had uh, every scholarship I could find. I had people that donated money for me to go. And without the help of those people, I couldn't have gone to college and had the career that I ended up having. And so I've, I'm getting up in age, and I'm getting to an age now where I realize there's more days behind me than there are ahead of me. And I hit a certain point in my life where I really wanted to, I want, I want to make sure that I'm leaving something eventually that, I, you know, eventually I'm going to be gone. And I want to make sure that I leave something behind that I can be proud of, and and uh, and so that's that's our goal with Creature Art Teacher is to put some positivity back into the world. You know, college education has gotten so insanely, obscenely expensive, and I want you to have an alternative to it. I want you know I want people to be able to to you know, be able to come to us and, and, and get good quality education. 
Map the Miserable Dingo on YouTube asks, do you think someone can steal a style? You know what? I think we all steal styles at some point or another. You know, we're all influenced, whether we realize we're doing it or not, we're all influenced by other people. And, um, but that to me, that's just the nature of how it goes. I mean, we all study the masters. We all study, you know, great painters of the past and we learn from them. And that's what I, that's how I think, uh, you know, studying someone else's style, um, you learn from it. And, you know, if someone's, if there's an artist out there that's well known, taking their style is not going to help you because everyone already knows that style. I mean, I can't go out there and paint like Frank Frazetta and say that I'm completely original, you know, or Norman Rockwell or whatever the case might be. There, he's coming together pretty nice, pretty happy here. So, yeah, you just got to. I think it's okay to copy styles as long as you're learning from them and don't, you know, don't obviously take, take a style and pass it off as your own, but be influenced by them and try to try to learn, you know, what is it about this style that you like that's causing you to keep coming back to it and go, wow, I really love this. You know, that's, that's what you want to look at. Fake it till you make it. Yeah, it's exactly right. No, fake it till you make it is is that's a that's definitely the truth. Thank you. Oh, Achilles is here. And uh, and Aiden just walked walked in earlier. Oh. So here I'm just. Just trying to get some of this down here. That that I am not happy with, but we'll figure something out here. There's something about that part of the. Would you recommend Richard Williams' The Animator Survival Kit? Absolutely, it's brilliant. It's absolute brilliant. <laughs> I was going to say something brilliant. else. Yes, it's very good. Very, very much so. Yes, I do recommend it. There, this is coming along. I've got a lot. I've, I could spend hours and hours and hours on this. But um, let's see how much longer do we have. We've got about 15 more minutes. So how's your day going? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to get some reflected light in here now. That's what I'm focusing on, getting some reflected light onto some of these areas here. Maybe a little bit in here. And I'm not going to worry about having the dark uh, line. I'm just going to let the line shine through. Let the line shine through. Do you ever give critiques on your students' work for those who are members of your page and doing your courses? No, but we are talking about it. This is a question that we get every week. Every, every live stream. Basically. Every live stream we get this question, and so trust me, we are working on a way that we can do this and accommodate everybody. Should make it like a live TV game show. <laughs> <laughs> like, who will be the next top artist? <laughs> Would you consider doing more paleo art besides mammoths? Oh yeah. I um, I love paleo art. I love building stuff up from the skulls. Because then you're creating, you know, something that really hasn't been seen in a long time. And that's kind of cool. That's a fun thing to do. But did we figure out what does red smell like? <laughs> nope. 
What inspires you to create? Um, I can't, I don't know. I, I just, I love nature. I love the act of drawing. I can't not create. So it, it's, it's like saying what inspires you to breathe. Well, I got to breathe so I can live. And kind of, it's kind of the same thing. I, I don't know how else to live my life. I've always drawn and um, I've never not drawn. So I don't, I don't know any other way. Have you guys ever considered doing a charity stream where you stream for a ridiculously long time while raising money for a charity? Um, no, not in that sense, but I would love to do that if I knew it would, if I, if it works, then yes, I would love to do something like that. There was, a, there was a suggestion once about a possible stream draw-alongs. That would be fun. Oh, yeah? That does sound like fun, actually. Oh, I've got a whole bunch of stuff up here. Sorry, Nick. Um, <laughs> Patchwork Heart asks, Do you have any tips for drawing hands? I'm working on a college application portfolio right now and screaming at my drawings. Well, you know, think about your hands as shapes. Um, break them down into shapes, you know, and, and think about them in that way. But you also got to think about the rhythms of your hands. Your hands spiral. You know, if you look at the way your fingers move, there's a certain way that they all work together. And... You know, draw your own hand and, and, and try to find those rhythms. I don't know how, what to tell you other than, you know, doing it a lot is going to help you. Um, but, yeah, hands, hands are tough. They're really tough. Looks like Austin just uh, entered the house. Oh, my daughter just got here. Do you have your own song? Uh, not really. <laughs> my own song. Airblades. Airblades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> Airblades. Airblades. And that's what I sing when I'm in the shower. <laughs> I'm washing my hair. I'm saying, Airblades. Aaron Blaze. Aaron Blaze, Aaron Blaze does whatever Aaron Blaze does. <laughs> well, we're going to have to wrap this up here pretty quick. My, uh, my lovely granddaughter has just arrived along with my daughter. Oh, Aiden wanted to come say hi. Oh, yeah, Aiden. Hey, come on in, Aiden. And you want to say hi to the world? Come on over here. Sit right here. Okay, you got to look at the camera right there. Right there. Can you say hi to everybody? Hi, everybody. This is my grandson, Aiden. <laughs> and so we've been drawing this today. What do you Ooh. think? Yeah, I, I know. Do you like it? Yeah, I, I saw uh, it on Vedanta's yeah? thing. Yeah? Couple. What's your favorite part? And your TV. Oh, okay, gotcha. I gotcha. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, let's answer some questions. Jay on Periscope asks, how do you set a goal for, your, for an artwork? Uh, do you have something in mind before you start drawing? So what do you do? How do you set a goal before, uh, for your artwork? <laughs> I do. I, a lot of times I'm thinking about a certain lighting thing that's inspired me or a combination of colors that have inspired me. Usually when I sit down to draw, I'm, I'm being inspired by one or two little things that that'll be the thematic for me uh, from an artistic standpoint as far as, you know, carrying out through the rest of uh, a, an image. So, yeah, a lot of times it's small things that inspire me. Um, have you heard of the animal artist David Shepard? Of course I have. Absolutely. Yes, he's wonderful. Uh, and the world says, hello, Aiden. The whole world just said, hello, Aiden. 
How did you know that? Did you hear it? Look, right there. The world says hello, Aiden. Where? Right there. <laughs> you see it? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see it. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. How did it send us? And it, because and the it whole world us. sees you through the camera. But we do have to get going, so I'm gonna That's pop. Cool. I'm gonna pop you off my knee. That's cool. And now, do you want to you want to come see me? And, no. Okay. That's, That's not gonna like work. That's really cool. I know. So I'm gonna get going. We're gonna finish this up, and uh, I'll be right out in a few minutes. Okay. All right. I love you. I remember when um, the I one person know. asked what what I would recommend, what or what you would recommend that person to draw? Yes. This is the she just finished. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's fantastic. I love it. Very cool, right? It is cool. It kind of looks like a, um, kind of looks like a, what? How do I get that over here so someone can see it, so everyone can see it? I don't know. Um. I need to tell the world something. <laughs> you have to tell the world something? Yeah. I okay, want to rule the world. Goodbye. Oh, come on over here. Goodbye, world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I love you. All right, go over. I'll be over there in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Go on. Skedaddle. Get out of here, kid. You bug me. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here, kid. You bug me. <laughs> Me. All right. Well, I'm going to call it. Uh, we are two hours in. Two hour. It's two fifty-seven. We are two hours into our our uh, our image making process. And I got some business to take care of. Me Dustin. Yeah, there. Dustin is moving into a new apartment, and so, so he's got to go take care of that. I have grandchildren to take care of. Never a dull moment in the Blaze household at all. And or 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 the Birch household, I might add. Us uh, we uh, we are a family organization, that's for sure. Very family oriented. So, um, so this is fun. I'm gonna fit I'm actually gonna sit and finish this and I'll show it to you guys on the next uh, live stream. Um, but, uh, I've really had a good time. Um, let me just finish right here. I just want to add a little bit more hair, but I got to go through and do, I'll do this on over the whole, the whole thing. But anyway, uh, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you had fun. Uh, you got to meet the family again. That was cool. <laughs> and, uh, um, we will get back together again on Tuesday. Uh, so until then, get out there, have some fun, put some beauty back into the world. And uh, I had a lot great time uh, with you guys. And uh, put your grocery cart away. You can see, can you hear? I've got a crying baby. <laughs> got to go take care of the crying baby. Uh, take it easy, you guys. Uh, and I'll talk to you on Tuesday. Dustin? See you guys later. Cowboy Bebop. <laughs>